Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Hands. In this series, I'm gonna be breaking down how to develop your accuracy, your speed, your stamina, dynamics, and overall control. In this first episode, we're gonna talk about accuracy. Four covers ago, I introduced an overhead angle. That cover that I introduced it for was Mortal After All by Architects. Since then, I've done a cover for The Seventh Circle by Architects, Eternally Yours by Motionless and White, and Dying to Heal by Architects again. In all four of those covers, we have that overhead that I'm talking about. And across all four of those covers, I've gotten compliments from you guys on my single stroke accuracy. So that's where I wanted to start off this series. I want to talk about how to develop your accuracy and the number one exercise slash trick or drum hack that I use to develop my accuracy. I don't do this exercise as often as I used to when I was younger, but it's still really important to have in your arsenal to go be able to go back through and use this to develop your accuracy from time to time. So before we get into what exercises develop accuracy, I'm going to talk first about the different types of grips and what grip I use. So there's two main types of grip. There's match grip and traditional grip. Traditional grip, where one hand is upside down, comes from traditional snare marching. Long ago, during wars, like the Civil War, the way troops were ordered what to do, whether it was where to march, how fast to march, what direction to go, whether to attack, whether to halt, whether to retreat, all of these commands were performed as different snare patterns. So having drummers on the battlefield and a drum line of snare drummers to command your soldiers in these wars was super, super important. That being said, the technology at the time meant that we didn't have forward face facing flat drums. The snare drum, instead of being mounted to some sort of steel contraption that keeps the drum level as you walk, like you would see at a football game on a modern drum line like today, instead of having all that, the drummers hung the snare drums off of a strap that left the snare drum attached to the left hip or the right hip. Oftentimes it was the left hip because that would be considered a right-handed traditional grip. Because of drummers having to play a snare drum off to the left hip or off the right hip, we developed traditional grip. As the years went on and we got level drums forward-facing drums and eventually the drum set was constructed and built drummers eventually switched over to match grip now even today we still use back and forth whether the snare drum is in front of you or whether it's hanging off your hip there's still examples of match grip and traditional grip this comes down to where your roots lie what type of music you listen to and learned early on what kind of drum programs you were part of if you're in sort of a drum line odds are you're very fluent in traditional grip if you're maybe like a jazz drummer or something along those lines same thing you're probably play, even playing the drum set with forward tilted drums so you can play the full drum set in a traditional grip. It's uncommon, but even today there's still drummers that play metal music with a traditional grip. A really good example of this is the drummer from All That Remains. He performs blast beats, very fast 30 second note fills, all with a traditional grip. So there's no right or wrong answer. It just comes down to preference and what you've learned and how you learned it. The other type of grip from traditional is known as match grip. Match grip essentially means that both hands are matching. In this grip, basically, each each hand is doing what the other hand is doing. That's all it is. Match grip cannot be played off the hip as easily because we get these sort of shoulder protrusions where your arm's sticking out. And if you're doing that for a long period of time, this is gonna really hurt your shoulder and your elbow. So because of that, match grip isn't as useful or as common in traditional snare settings. Odds are, if you're watching my videos, probably a metal drummer or really into metal and rock music. What match grip's really great for is coming down on a snare drum or on a tom or on a cymbal with a lot of power and force. As you all know, from watching my covers, I play match grip. Now, let's break down match grip. There's three different types of grip inside of the match grip category. Those grips are known as American, French, and German. So starting with French grip, French grip looks like this. Essentially what's going on is the palms are facing one another and you're using your fingers. All of the grips, as you know, I'm not gonna cover this today, but we'll talk about this in future videos, but all of the grips simply use a fulcrum in your fingers to be able to create a pivot point that allows you to play the drum. But we'll talk about that in other videos. Videos. For today, let's get back to the grips. So French grip, your palms are together, facing each other. German grip, your palms are facing the ground, directly down. And American grip is sort of a hybrid between the two, where your palms are facing 45 degree angles towards the ground, sort of out and down like that. The grip that I use is a variation on the German grip. Years ago when I was 17, 18, I was playing a lot of shows, practicing a ton, working with different bands, and on top of all of it, I was working out a lot. And this jacked me up. I had to do physical therapy to correct all the damage that 
I had done to my wrists. I went to one of my mentors at the time, which was a drummer for a band way back in the day called the Philosopher Kings. He explained to me that the reason why I'm having so many problems with my wrists is because I'm not playing properly. I don't have a very good technique or form. And this is resulting in the aches and pains that I'm experiencing in and throughout my wrist. What he explained for me to do was the grip that I currently use today, which is, a, like I said, a variation on the German grip. And it looks like this. As you can see, I'm comfortably sitting with my wrists pointing from my elbows completely straight. If you draw a line from my wrist outwards, it's actually the line would actually go across the edges of the snare drum. It would not go to the center. But the sticks are pointing at angles from my palms into the center of the snare drum. That way when I play, you see that the stroke is actually moving my wrist in the most ergonomic way, up and down, instead of having this kink in my wrist and then forcing me to move my wrist in and out. That's basically just a hyper intense version of the German grip, and that's how I play. If you're having pains like I described in throughout your wrists while you play, try this out. This might help, might not, but it definitely fixed my problems and it's a grip that I still use today. Now you're gonna watch my videos and be like, there's a point where you didn't and there's a point where you didn't. Yes, you're right. There's plenty of times where I don't stick to that rule, but for the majority of the time, I try and keep that my wrists are straight and the sticks are coming into the center of the snare drum, not because my arms are pointing in, but because the sticks are pointing in on this angle from my palms. So outside of using that German grip that I just talked about and broke down, I do use a traditional grip from time to time and I do practice quite often with a French grip. French grips are great for speed drumming or really fast blast beats because you can play lighter with it but a lot faster because you're creating the falcon with your fingers and it's sort of just a little bit of a twitch that brings the stick down to the head and back up. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, you've seen it a ton of times. So yeah, don't just stick to one grip, learn all the grips, but have a favorite, have one that you sort of primarily use when you're sitting at the kit. Okay, cool, so that's the grip portion. Whatever script you use, whether it's traditional, French, American, whatever it is, it works. Now let's talk about developing accuracy with that grip. Here's a clip from Mortal After All in where you see what I call a cog stroke. What's going on here is you can see that the sticks are landing in the same place on the snare as one another. Those tips are crossing it themselves perfectly. And I call this a cog stroke. The reason why I call all it is because when you look at the sticks, it looks like they're crossing over each other perfectly, just like a cog would in a clock or in a machine. It kind of looks like this, where the same point and they're going over top of one another, but never touching one another. Now, how do you develop this type of accuracy on your own? Well, there's three ways to do this. One of them works very effectively. The other two, I just find that over the years have sort of helped me, but I don't actively seek it out to practice it. The first way is just turning off the lights. Get your setup set the exact way it's gonna be every single time so that everything is the same distance from one another so it'll always feel the exact same. Once you're at that point, then turn off all the lights in the room except for like maybe one small little light and do all your practice sessions in the dark. When I was performing with my first band, we would do week-long rehearsals before going out for a tour. And what we would do is we'd run through the set three or four times in a almost dark room. The only lights in the room were from the lights off of the rack units. The reason why we did this was because we got really good at practicing our own choreography and not hitting each other. I'm a drummer, I would never hit anybody, but that's what it was there for for them. But what I found was having the lights off and learning to do stick tricks in the dark and play in the dark helped me to develop my accuracy and my sense of where everything is, even if I can't see. And when you go and perform, you never can see. There's no light on you, or there's a strobe light on you, or there's different types of spotlights, but there's never just a open light like in a room, like in your practice room. So get used to playing in the dark. This will help with your accuracy and this will help you when you go out and play shows because you want to be able to do everything that you can do in the practice room on stage and not rely on your eyes when everything goes dark. That's number one. That's pretty simple too. The second way to develop accuracy I found is that once I started practicing on both an acoustic kit and an electric kit or a practice pad kit, my accuracy got much better. And I think part of the reason for this was when I played on my first electric kit, my TD-15, the pads were a lot smaller than what I was playing on my acoustic kit. I think those pads are only eight inch pads on that kit. So I was having to hit a much smaller target and I would make sure that the pads were as spread apart as the actual pieces for the drum set that they're mimicking were as spread. That way I got used to making the same sort of distance between each element. Having to bridge those distances and play on a smaller pad meant that my accuracy improved. Just inherently by trying to hit those smaller things in the direct center. You can do this by just buying an electric kit. If you have an electric kit, that's a great way to sort of start upping your accuracy. There is a 250-ish dollar DW practice pad set with the pads. Oh, I think all the pads are around eight inches. So same thing, practicing across that with big distances, an equivalent distance to what your acoustic kit would have, that will help you develop your accuracy as well. 
So the ultimate weapon in your toolkit for developing accuracy is a bottle cap practice pad. This is my bottle cap practice pad. I'm about to show you how to make one of your own. If you don't want to see how to make your own bottle cap practice pad and you bought one of the store versions or you already have a bottle cap and you don't really need to be shown how to glue on some foam to the top of it, then you can skip to the timestamp on your screen now. If you're still watching from here, I'm going to show you just real quick how to make one of these on your own. So to build your own bottle cap practice pad, you can start off by selecting your bottle. I'd recommend a stronger bottle with a wider cap like a Gatorade bottle, but any bottle will do just fine. First thing we did was fill our bottle with dried rice to strengthen the bottle so that it was not crushed by the pressure from my legs while using it. This also gives it weight and just makes it easier to use. We used a piece of regular printer paper rolled into a funnel to get the rice into the bottle. If you have a kitchen funnel on hand, it'll probably be easier to use that. After you fill your bottle once, you may want to shake it around and let the rice settle. This will expose empty space and give you more room to add more rice. Next we use crazy glue to seal the cap shut so that it cannot be opened by accident while practicing. To create the actual practice surface, we used a couple of old sim pads. I mentioned sim pads in my Great Gifts for Drummers video. These are just an upgraded version of cymbal felts. Lindsay cut a wedge out of one of them and rounded it slightly with a pair of regular kitchen scissors. After she had a wedge shape that would fit nicely into the hole of the other sim pad, we then glued the wedge into place using more crazy glue. Finally, to finish up the practice surface, we used more crazy glue to attach the sim pad to the cap of the bottle. Then we turn the bottle upside down and let the crazy glue attaching our practice surface to the bottle dry. With the red wedge in the center, it kind of makes it look like a mini target. After letting the bottle dry, we finished up by adding grip to the sides of it. This way the bottle could be gripped by my legs and wouldn't slip through with the stick's impact. To add grip, Lindsay took an old yoga mat and cut a strip off of it. Then glued it around the outside of the bottle. We added scotch tape to the seam to hold it into place while it dried, however the scotch tape if removed now will rip the mat, so I would suggest avoiding tape and instead using something like rubber bands to hold that into place while drying. And there you have it, your own bottle cap practice pad. So now that you've got this guy made, how are you gonna put this to good use? Well, the idea behind it is simple. You're gonna put this between your legs, mount it kind of like a snare drum would be, and this is just a miniature snare drum. So now we take the bottle cap practice pad and you're just gonna run through basic rudiments. So here's a single stroke. And of course, double stroke. Paradiddle. And a double stroke paradiddle. Okay, cool, so as you can see, this is a super effective way to run through your basic rudiments, or all your rudiments for that matter, and get your accuracy up to speed. This is also gonna develop that cog stroke that I talked about. You can purchase store-bought versions of these guys where they strap to your leg and it's just sort of a little miniature circle. Gibraltar makes one like that. But I started doing this bottle cap method long before I knew about any miniature practice pads because a drum teacher way back in the day explained this to me and how I can use any bottle cap to amp up my level of accuracy. Gatorade bottles work really well for this. I think this guy had uh, some kind of coconut oil in it. So yeah, any really bottle will do. The smaller the cap, the better, because the smaller target to hit, and it's gonna better help you develop the accuracy. So yeah, as you get better, here are those rudiments again, just a little bit faster. Cool, and then you just keep going with that. So the rudiments for this lesson that I performed, the four of them, which is the single stroke, the double stroke, the paradiddle, and the double stroke paradiddle, I will include in the comments below. If you guys decide to make your own bottle cap practice pad, make sure to post a picture of it and tag me in it. I'd love to see what kind of creations you guys get on the go. You can connect with me on my social media pages. There are links for those on the screen for you now. I hope, really hope this video helps you in building your own accuracy. Thanks so much, and I will see you guys very soon with something new.